Hi, in the previous video I briefly introduced a Excel uh, version of the distribution board chart. Here I will walk you through the template, the template makeup, so you can understand how it's made up and use it efficiently. If you are registered, you can download this template free of charge uh, from my website and that will be saved in an exercise folder. Please treat this template as a bonus material. You can use this template together with ProDesign or Standalone. You can use it as you build your electrical system or just a single circuit chart. You can also use it to carry out load assessment. Let's just jump into it and I'll walk you through how, how it works, how it's, how it's built, so you can use it efficiently. Let's just crack on. In your exercise folder, you will have two files. Circuit chart template with extension XLSM, which is basically version with macros, and one standard Excel spreadsheet without macros. The difference is the one with macros, which you're looking at now, have this functionality where it highlights the rows for you, so you know exactly what you're looking at, what circuit. I find it very handy, that's why that's why the macro basically. And then in the source folder it works the same way. It highlights you the line you're looking at. The normal Excel version works exactly the same with the exception of uh, the highlight. Uh, the highlight will just not work. Okay, let me explain how the disport chart is made out so you won't accidentally damage it. First of all, you can see in here I've got some hidden columns so I'll go unhide and that's where all the calculations are being made okay so don't add any rows and it will work you don't really need to look at that at all therefore those columns from P to AD should be hidden I'm trying to move this away so that's where the calculations are being made we can also see that this is at the moment, 24-way, three-phase distribution board chart. In the column M to O, you basically need to enter the load characteristic if you want to calculate the load, obviously. But you can print without this by hiding those columns as well. But let's talk about printing later. What's important in the calculations, there is a formula which divides two arguments. For that reason, in circuit 24, L1, L2 and L3, this is not actually zero. It's a very, very small number, as you can see in here. That's why you can't just copy or enter zero in here, because then you will have issues with calculations. You need to have a small number there. The Excel spreadsheet will calculate the load for you exactly as per Amtec or Trimble Pro Design with the same settings of power factor diversity per individual circuit and at the distribution board, then the overall calculated load will be exactly as per Trimble Pro Design. I checked it is verified. Okay, what else? You can add columns in here that will not affect functionality of the template. You can enter here, look, I can insert column here or here and it will it will work okay you won't affect calculations the calculations are being made in those columns the hidden columns and in those columns so you can't change them everything else you can don't insert the rows everything else you can but okay what if you don't want 24 way this board that's easy you just go there and then let's say i've got six way distribution board Happy days is a six way. The schedule is built as a table and you've got filters and you can apply the filters. So by using the filters, you can control how many ways there is. I can also make this disboard single phase. I just remove say L2 and L3 and suddenly I've got six way single phase disboard connected to phase L1. So it's very versatile that uh, schedule and there's so much more you can do. So let me just demonstrate that. Okay, I want this to be three phase. As you can see in here, there's a table I use this table to calculate load on my circuit when I build the system. I'll just give you a practical example now of what you can do with the schedule. 
let's go to the source tab. In a source tab, I've got my typical loads, which I use for my designs at work. The ones in green are verified by data sheet of the device. The ones in yellow are my assumptions, but those assumptions are very good assumptions. I also use them during my designs. Obviously, yeah, I take no responsibility for your design. You need to use your own expertise. You can add as many different types of loads as you want. Ideally, first you want to expand the table so you can add more. Let's say, I copy that line. Okay. I changed this to G1. It needs to be unique. Let's let's create a few of those, four of those lights, right? Oh, let's go one more. And let's say I've got five types of lights. Each of them has slightly different load. It very often happens that you have different types of light fittings per circuit and you have to somehow calculate and add them together. That's why you've got this table here. If you have different types, project specific loads, luminaires in this example, just enter them in here and then remember the SKU code. Then you go to your schedule and you type them in here. Look, G1 should be able to copy. That's it. And one more. So I've got five types of lights. You've got the description, fire factor, typical diversity. So let's say I've got two of those, five of those, ten of those, three of them, five of them. Four. And now I know that my design current for that circuit is 8.88 amp. Quite a lot for light fitting. Go one of those. Okay, that's better. Let's imagine that that's the lights I have. Obviously, if you calculate and the load is too much, then you should consider splitting the, the circuit. And that's why I use the table. For example, I've got lighting circuit. Now I put my load in here, 6.78. I put my power factor, 0 0.96. And diversity on that particular circuit, typical industry standard for lighting, 0 0.7. And as you can see, my load is being calculated. That's exactly what you want to do. That's how you work with this template. Now, a bit more about it. Typically on the UK version circuit chart, underneath you would have the code of wiring type and installation method. This schedule I've prepared for the purpose of design, not certification. So all those columns here is enough for me to do my design. I don't really need the method of installation, but if I wanted to, I can. I would just add column here, remove the color coding. And I would say, okay. And now what I tend to do, instead of having those codes underneath, you can just type in single code, single, and then say trunking, okay? It's just easier. You've got space for it. I don't need code. I don't need to cross-reference anything. It's there. It's easy to see. That's how I prefer to work. I delete that column. Let's say I don't want it. So that's how it works. And it will not affect calculations. If you add columns in here, just don't insert any rows. Now, I'm going to show you how I inserted those loads in here, which is my kitchen set from a actual real project. I'm going to show you some. I've got a couple of drawings open. Let me just move my screen. In here, you've got the kitchen with references to outlets. That's the reference from the schedule. Luckily for me, the schedule here is is done as a table in AutoCAD. I can select this table, right click, and I can export, put this to downloads, as CSV, say, and I open that in Excel. So this is the same schedule you just looked at, which the CSV file saved as Excel, and then I added some columns, added some colors. This is how it was exported. So Kitchen Specialist is telling me the telephone design current is 13 amp. That's definitely not the case. So I've got some assumptions here, as you can see, assumed to be confirmed by Specialist. At the moment, I carry on with my design based on my assumptions, but I clearly state what my assumptions are. And some of the loads are actually correct and I verified them. So I've got them as green, good, verified. I then added column with questions asking for clarification. But this table then, I've copied the item and then I went to my table here and I go control V and then the description and the load and so on. And I created this. If I go to my table, by the way, never delete this first row because it's needed to have a blank row in the table. You see, I copied that down. Okay, so now I've got a black, blank table. Okay, I've just inserted the kitchen equipment into, into my table. Let me show you the drawing again. So I'm looking at the drawing, have the references there, and trying to establish what circuit should I have. Let's just choose an example. 309, okay? One. 
I know what that is, microwave, and there's one of them, because the design current is quite high, and they want an isolator, they want a single phase isolator, I will have this as a radial circuit. What I normally do, because I don't want to copy this and paste that there, because that may not work, but it will work if you open Notepad, I'll paste that into my Notepad. Now I can paste that text, you see? Let's say SWA LSF. Design current is 14.8 amp, power factor 0 0.9, and diversity 2.5. So this is 16 amp circuit. I'm gonna assume at the moment, this will be 2.5 mil circuit if I'm going SWA cable. Type of protected device, MCB type C, rating 16 amp, short circuit capacity, operating current, let's say it's not applicable, circuit type radio, design length, I would measure it based on my containment obviously, this board is here, I would use polyline, imagine the colors like that, and I would then check properties length, say 12 meters, and I will add drop 3 meters down, 3 meters up, so that's 18 meters, so let's say I would round it up to 20, so that circuit is 20 meters, and that's the process of the design I normally do, but this schedule is very powerful, before you actually start doing anything with it. You need to save yourself the blank. So I copied over the top circuit so it's blank. I entered zero uh, design current, power factor and diversity one again. So my load again is zero. So each of those tabs is a disk Each of those colored cells is automatically being calculated so you should not change it. This one for example will inherit the name of the tab. Let me copy that. Move a copy, create copy, okay. And I create another one, copy the copy okay and one more actually i create two more so i want my blank untouched i will use it to build more items okay let's say start from here i rename that the db1 you see the db name automatically changes project if you enter the name the red highlighted text will disappear for today's date happy days revision locations and then fed from let's say it's fed from pb panel board one i use that tab call it db kitchen enter you see that has changed let me copy this paste location same kitchen let's say it's also fed from pb1 okay now i've already done the design and i've got it open on my other screen so i'm just going to copy over the circuits let's check in the ways six ways the one i have is 12 way 12 way check yes it's 12 way now i'm going to copy my other 12 way this board control v and i've got all my circuits that's my distribution board if you want you can check this against pro design if you enter the circuits exactly as they are the load will be exactly as calculated by trimble okay so let's say i create a db kitchen just for speed i'm going to copy circuits with load to my db1 i just got it Try to copy, and copy two and three. And just go eleven. Okay, my second DB, DB two. Actually, I'm quite done because let's just delete that and I copy that again because I already have those details there and I've got some circuits. I don't want to type it twice, especially for the purpose of this video. Create copy of that distribution board. Now I'm going to rename to DB2. Now I've got DB2, all those details already there. I already had some circuits. I'm going to just copy them. Control C and enter 4, 5, and 6. Okay, so that's my circuits, okay? And my load. As you can see, you've got diversified load. This is my connected load. And then the load is diversified. If I had one everywhere, my connected load and diversified load are the same. If I diversify some, it will then automatically be calculated. If I change power factor, it will automatically influence the load and the overall power factor for the distribution board. Okay, so I've got three distribution boards and I said all of them are fed from PB1. So let's call this one PB1. Great stuff. I want to know what's the load on this PB1. And when you build a large system using this Excel spreadsheet, this is the way to do it. Let's say this panel board is six-way. Could copy it again, but I'll just copy that and location as a one fed from L to one switch board. Now let's say first circuit is my kitchen, so I'm gonna go L1 equals kitchen and select the DB name, enter, copy that formula, control C, control V, 
control view. This is three phase circuit. Okay, I know I'm, I'm going to feed it with SWA and LSF, 90 degree weight cable. I don't know what size yet because I don't know the load, so I can't choose protective device until I know the load. But you know the load when you're building systems, the load may change on its own on individual circuits, you may resh reshuffle some circuits and, and there you may change diversity. So you don't want to go back and forth, back and forth. You want this PB1 to automatically update. So this is how you do it. So I go to phase L1 equal and then go kitchen and then press on this diversified L1 phase load. Enter. Now because L1, L2, L3 are, are underneath each other, what I can do, I can just drive so I copy, look, F4, F5, F6 from the same tab kitchen is being copied over. That's what I want. Now I need to transfer over the power factor and diversity as well. So the overall load on this PV1 is calculated correctly. So I'm going to do exactly the same. Select L1 equals kitchen power factor, overall power factor for distribution load. Enter. Now this will be the same on each phase. So I'm going to copy, paste, paste. So you see the same formula, unlike in here where you've got F4, 5 and 6. Diversity, exactly the same. Equals, go to kitchen and diversity at the DB level. Enter. Okay, now I'm going to copy the formula, not the cell itself. Okay, happy days. Right, I'm going to do the same for DB2 and DB1. I'll leave the blank as blank so I can use it later okay i'm just going to quickly do the same thing equals db3 load equals power factor diversity happy days okay and lastly the db1 equals db1 name enter copy that control v control v and load l1 equals db1 L1, enter, and copy that down, power factor equals that, and then copy the formula, paste and paste, and the last one is my diversity equals db1, diversity, enter, copy the formula, control C, control V, control V. Good. Let's say all my other circuits are spare. I have two with protective device. MCCB, this is panel board, writing, let's call it 160 amp, 36KA. And there's no RCB. Obviously there's no circuit, so let's say I've got one spare circuit with protective device and then two spare circuits without protective device. That's how it represent my circuits. Good. Now I've got a load. Connected load is this load. Remember that load is already diversified. So it's connected load at this distribution board because it would be impractical if you wanted to ignore diversity and base your cable selection for that kitchen board based on the connected load. It's impractical. Um, that's why we took into account the diversified load and its power factor and overall diversity. Just to show you how it works, my connected load is, let's say, 227 amp, diversified 107. If I diversify this more, 0.9, my load goes down, 96. So I can get away with 100 amp supply on it possibly 160 will be better okay but depends what you have and now you can see this is being reflected on on this pb1 automatically the pb1 is automatically being updated 
that's what you want. I go to DB1, I apply 0.5 diversity. The load is updating automatically. I would never do 0.5 by the way, it's just an example. Let's go on DB2.9. And that is all reflected here, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, you see? And the load is being calculated. I can apply the diversity at the panel level now as well, 0 0.9. And now that's my design current for that panel. That is quite, quite good. You can build really large system using this Excel spreadsheet. And I would color code, let's say all my PB1, all my disabled fed of PB1 would be the tab color space is pink. And then I create new one, move a copy, my blank. I would change its color to, let's say, blue. And that would be my kind of second leg of, of my electrical system. And that would be then maybe also fed from LV1. And I would also create LV1 maybe. And then collect, connect all of this. And I could model the diversity per the whole system using this Excel spreadsheet. Really, really handy. What if you want to show the distribution board for design purposes as a circuit chart, but you don't want to show the load, maybe it's in, still in process, maybe you have a partial information, or whatever other reason you may have that you don't want to share your calculated load details, how would you do it? Well, let me give you an example. I go copy that DB uh, kitchen. First of all, look print area is that here. What I can do, I can hide this. And what I can do here, don't delete any formulas because it will stop the functionality. But what you can do, go no border, do not fill anything in text white. And look, no one can do the same in here. And no one will know that you have anything there. You can PDF this document now without the extra load details if you don't want to or are not ready to share this information. That's how I work. And then if you want it back, you just recreate the colors. Yeah? Same way as it, as it was in here. It's a bit more work, but... That's what you can do. If you have ideas of how to improve that, that would be good to hear. Okay, but that is how you can use the schedule. I hope you find it useful. I just noticed my video stopped working, but hey-ho, what can I do? Yeah, I just realized the software crashed and I had to restart. So I think that's a quite good overview of the functionality of, of the schedule. Please let me know what you think. I hope you find it helpful because I do. I use it every day at work. I'm going to delete that. Yes. And I will save this in Exercise folder as P01.01 as a template. So you can have the blank and the file from the exercise. You can see how it works. Thank you very much for watching. All right. Bye.